Hey, it's time for voiceover body shop tech talk. Tech talk. Tech talk. Oh yeah, I was supposed to make tech echo talk. sounds with tech my face. Talk. Tech talk. Tech talk. Tech talk. Tech talk. And it's tech talk number <laughs> ninety one. Woo! Believe it or not, ninety one episodes jam packed with more tech information than you would ever possibly need to know. So, uh, <laughs> hold on one second. Hopefully uh, some of it's useful too. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> yeah. Most, most of it, I think people find pretty useful, uh, anyway, but, uh, we're going to have some tech talk and we've got, uh, demonstrations and of course your questions, which you can ask, like if you were joining us with uh, Johnny Heller last week. You can ask them live in our chat room, whether you're on Facebook or on YouTube. Yep. And George and I will answer those questions about the amazing variety of things that can go wrong or that you want to know about when it comes to home voiceover studio audio. Are we ready? Let's do this. It's time for voiceover body shop tech talk right now. <laughs> Tech Talk. Brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, the home of Harlan Hogan's signature products. Source Elements, the makers of Source Connect. VoiceOver Heroes, become a hero to your clients with award winning voiceover training. VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your voice actor website doesn't have to be a pain in the butt. VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for voiceover success. And World Voices, the industry association of freelance voice talent. And now, here's your hosts, Dan and George. Ah, yes. Hi, I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or VO. B S Tech Talk 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 Tech Talk. Uh, well, uh, you got to know something about the voiceover business, and that is that most people don't understand the technology at all. We had Johnny Heller on last week, and he's like, "I don't know any of this stuff." And this guy is like a superstar in the in the voiceover world, and especially in the audiobook world. Yeah, I don't know any of this stuff. It's like. I think the majority, George, don't know exactly what's going on because they're like, I want to be an actor. I want to be a voice actor. I want to do all this great stuff, but uh, uh, but I got to have all this tech. Yeah. And it's not really rocket science. But It's just overwhelming. The, the sources of information people are getting are very confusing, sometimes conflicting, sometimes yeah. just dead act, dead <laughs> Dead, dead on wrong. <laughs> dead wrong, yeah. And uh, it's very challenging. That's and that's the problem. We will not make it challenging for you. We will demystify and simplify and get you to the answers you need fast, so you don't get stupefied. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's it, there's a lot of stuff you got to know. Fortunately, there are those of us that actually know exactly what it's supposed to sound like and how to produce that sound in your home voiceover studio. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's what George and I do almost full time. I'm still a voice actor and I'm still president of Wobo and all these other things that I do. Uh, but I really enjoy doing uh, all the tech stuff and George does it full time and it's what he lives. It's what he bleeds. Uh, <laughs> when, he, when he goes rolling down a hill on his bike and falls off, it bleeds voice over a technology. So, <laughs> if they want to work with you, George, where do they go? <laughs> they can go over to George the dot tech. And that's my world for voiceover technology support, free information, lots and lots of free resources and ways to hire us for tech support on demand or offline. Like just maybe a plain old sound check where I listen to your audio and give you notes about technical issues which is really the cornerstone of what we do. Dan, you do the same thing basically right over at homevoiceoverstudio.com. And uh, yeah, if you go there, you find my specimen collection cup and I will listen to your audio for $25 and I will give you a very thorough analysis uh, of how to do that. Plus, if you do a consultation with me, a full hour and a half, you'll get more than just voiceover tech. I will teach you the basics of how to get it done, how to get it done right. And then I'll throw something else in there that people will like, 
oh, I hadn't thought about that. Because uh, I've met a lot of interesting people doing a lot of interesting stuff who want to get into voiceover. And it's like, well, what were you doing before? And, you know, that sort of thing. And uh, we got into some very interesting conversations that will help you push your career forward. So go on over to homevoiceoverstudio.com and check out the services that uh, that I offer over there. Well, I have to start off our, our tech segment with a poem. Oh. Believe it or not. Now, there was an issue that that came up over the weekend while mm-hmm. we were all digesting, uh, you know, leftover turkey. Uh, and it was <laughs> uh, someone named Julie had a problem with Twisted Wave. And mm-hmm. she contacted everybody. Uh, but she, she was she, panicking. Know, apparently. Yeah, yeah, she was really panicking. But she wrote this very interesting poem, which I promised her I would read on the show. Cool. It says, thanks for the giving. Twas two days past post Turkey when I in my booth went to save as like I usually do. Uh, this pop up continued denying my save regardless of dozens attempts that I made. I panicked, inhaled, and said, "Hey, okay, man, chill the fuck out and write <laughs> anyone you can." On Hi- on Highland Jen Henry on JMC two on Facebook on YouTube. What else can I do? Email Dan Leonard, which he did. Search Troubleshoot Galore. Move on to Jim Edgar, whom I'd not met before. Brad found Uncle Roy, who gracefully called, removed my software, and then reinstalled. Try now, Unc Roy said. To VO gods I prayed, then yelling with joy, it worked! It is saved! But then later on, other emails came through, trying to help seeing what they could do. Dan Leonard, Jim Edgar, these guys wrote me back just two days post-Turkey to the, the, their day to chillax. Twisted Wave <laughs> themselves wrote me about a bug that was stinging us, waivers, but now taken care of. Why all these people were so willing and kind, jumping to help me not lose my mind. It's just like I've heard about VO peeps. They're nice and they care in bounds and in leaps. Can't thank you enough. Each giver of time, of knowledge, of context. Hey, this thing rhymes. Uh, you peeps out there doing VO for a living, thank you for caring and thanks for giving. Wow. That was I freaking that. awesome. I, I got to read that on the show. <laughs> yeah, it's fantastic. That covers one of my stories, too. That, that I seems, know. Well, that was part of the story time. about the problem with Twisted Wave. <laughs> That's but fantastic. thanks to Julie Savatier for that. I really fantastic. appreciate that. So, what do you got in your update this week? Well, I thought I would start with a quick little show and a hear and tell, actually, and let you hear. Good. So, you know, the new technology this year to me has really been anything relating to using any AI systems. And so AI is just such a buzzword now, right? But it's basically machine learning, which means that you're using computers to learn patterns, learn things in the way a sort of more like a person would. Like, oh, I've heard that before. That's familiar to me. As opposed to just looking at, you know, uh, well, the sounds louder than this threshold. So I will do this AI, right? So there are a lot of tools now that use AI. They may not promote heavily using the buzzwords AI, but they're being used behind the scenes on different levels. And so I thought I would just compare some sound samples using these tools to remove noise, right? The number one thing we all shudder about in a home studio is noise. So First, I captured some audio in a typical fashion here in Venice, where I live, of the effing airplanes that fly over. And I'm not going to play the entire minute and a half long sample, because that's literally how long it took for this stupid small aircraft to clear. But here's here's what it sounded like in the raw form. And, and by the way, just for fun, I started off the sample with the sound of me slamming my office door, okay? <laughs> so this is, I'll play like 10 to 20 seconds. Here, here we go. Here's what the raw audio sounded like. And just because I can, I'll let you see what it actually looks like on screen at the same time. Okay, so here's the beginning sample. Let's just play the beginning. And here we go. I'll turn off my mic so you don't hear any other room noise. make some random noises all right this is most actors worst nightmare small aircraft noise flying overhead obviously completely ruining a take 
unless you have Extract Dialog by Icon Digital or Clarity Waves VX. You decide which one does a better job. You get the idea. That plane goes on for a minute and a half, right? While I sit here fuming about it. Okay, so I've got three tools. I was I just did two, and then I threw the last one in just to see. Um, I used Acon, which is spelled A-C-O-N, Extract Colon Dialog. That's the name of the plugin. It's catchy, right? Um, I used Acon Digital, uh, Extract Digital, Extract Dialog. I used... Waves Clarity VX, which you, I know you've heard me talk about on the show. And um, I used Isotope RX9's Music Rebalance, which it didn't even occur to me to think to use it like this, but somebody else pointed out that you could use it to extract dialogue from a mix, or in this case, from noise. So I tried all three, including with the door slam, to see what it would do with that. Well, here's the first... Uh, let's say 20 seconds, same amount, of, same amount of time using these three different tools. So first is using Acon Extract Dialog. Random noises. So you remember, right before I said that, I slammed my office door. So Acon just completely removed the door slam 100%. Okay, here's my dialog. All right, this is Most Actors' Worst Nightmare. Small aircraft noise flying overhead, obviously completely ruining a take. Unless you have Extract Dialog by Acon Digital or Clarity Waves VX. Pretty good, but I'm still picking up some hints of that. Plane is in there. It's kind of like at the end of the word when it when the gate I call it a gate, but it's not really what it is. But it's when it releases the processing is where you sort of really pick up on it, right? So I thought, okay, that's cool. I'd never used the tool before. Well, let's compare it to what I thought was really the ultimate tool for this kind of stuff. This is now Waves Clarity VX. Just make some random noises. So the door sound, the door shutting was just like a click. Yeah. All right, this is most actors' worst nightmare. Small aircraft noise flying overhead, obviously completely ruining a take. Unless you have Extract Dialog by Acon Digital or Clarity Waves VX, you decide which one does a better job. Now, that one was interesting because it got progressively better over time, right? I noticed that. Sort of as it learned my voice pattern, it kind of like started getting better and better. So, you know, theoretically by the end, it would be even better. Let's see if jumping, jumping to the end here. A full minute and a half later, I can still hear the plane. All right, it's slowed down. It's it's now leveled, so now it's quiet. Okay, so and that, and that's by the way, I should have told you, I maxed out the settings on these things, right? So normally, you know, artifacts would be a really a big problem, right? You'd hear all kinds of weird swooshing and waterfall effects and stuff. I had these all the way turned up to see what they can do. All right, now we'll try rebalance. Remember, this is designed to separate out, say, vocals from drums and bass and other instruments, right? So let's see what it does with this, uh, in this experiment. Just make some random noises. That was the weird, weird sound that the door made. So let's hear my voice. All right, this is most actors' worst nightmare. Small aircraft noise flying overhead, obviously completely ruining a take. Unless you have extract dialogue by Econ Digital. So the, the, the takeaway there is that that gave you all of the weird artifacts and the airplane sounds. So that didn't work at all. So I don't know whoever has recommended that to me as a, as a tool. It's definitely not uh, what it's all, all that it's cracked up to be. So as I guess the point of this experiment is to show you that one, nothing beats soundproofing the correct way because all of these tools did varying degrees of a, you know, a decent job. Um, they, they have somewhat unpredictable results because it's AI and not just algorithms, sometimes they behave differently based on the situation. So it's a little bit less predictable what they're going to do. But I was surprised. I thought Acon Extract Dialog was pretty darn strong for a tool that's not really been talked about very much. So I just wanted to shine a little light on them and you know let people know that's another one to try. And as always, do not buy any of these without trying a demo first. 
And of course, all of them, they have deals that end basically today. So as soon as the show's over, Get you want to go play around with these and then, <laughs> and then commit to buying one of them because they all have deals, right? Yeah. So that's a, that just to review, that's Acon Extract Dialogue. Uh, Waves Clarity VX, which has basically been 40 bucks almost all year, and Isotopes RX, which now is version 10, um, and that's Music Rebalance. It's just part of the RX suite. Um, another thing, so I've, I've been having some major instability, instability issues with my Mac Mini, which was running on Big Sur for a very, very long time, and as I've told a million people over and over, don't upgrade unless you have a reason. That was a reason. It was fine. It was trying to drive me crazy. Certain apps would crash when I quit them. Others would crash at random. In fact, one of them still is. A mini cam crashed during the first half of the show tonight. Um, but a lot of things got better after this upgrade. And what I did is I took my Mac Mini from Big Sur to Monterey. No, I did not go to Ventura. I've heard a lot of good things, but I'm still not going that step to the current OS. The reason is now because I'm on Mont Mant Mantora, <laughs> Mantora. Now I'm on Monterey. Uh, let's just combine them. Together. Now that I'm on Monterey, I am on the last, theoretically, the last update of Monterey there's going to be. I'm on 12.6.1. Um, so that means it shouldn't have any surprises. It's, it's in a stable state. It's had all of its updates. And it seems to have been, other than many cam which I'm still waiting for their support team to get back to me and tell me why it crashes three weeks later. Um, it's, it's the only thing that's giving me trouble. Everything else, all the other little quirky, glitchy, weird things, it would crash over the, week, over the weekend for no reason. Just all this weird stuff, all gone. So if you're on Big Sur or any older OS and you do have like random problems that just like, and they're like telling you, oh, try this, try that. Maybe that is a good time to uh, upgrade to the next OS. So just in my case, it did work out well. I had backups of everything. I knew all my stuff was going to still work on Monterey. I did my research, but it does run, run better afterward. Yeah. I tend to trust the updates no matter what, because I'm all the way on Ventura. Yeah. What I, what I have found is some programs have not caught up uh, with... Like with, what? With, oh, um you know, some video programs, things, yeah. that, you know, some, some chat programs. Yeah. And it will, you can see what's going on. It's like taking it a little bit longer. You'll get a little bit of a beach ball and mm -hmm. then it'll start working. So I think mm -hmm. that Rosetta is, you know, still part of this and Definitely. it's still, it takes it a, a little while to learn it and then it starts running it much more efficiently. So you just have to be a little patient with it. But yeah, when I load that clarity plugin, that's about the only time I see a beach ball on my computer. When it lo when I load that clarity plugin, I see a little pinwheel for about three or four seconds. All right, but That's that cuts it. into your next thing here. So on Ventura, yeah. Well, um, well, Ventura again. You know, I'm I have heard from Dan, and I have heard from many others that have had very good luck with Ventura. All of those people were already running Monterey, and all of them are running an M1 or silicon based Mac. So they're all in very modern systems. And I think for those people, Ventura is working fine. And probably for me, it might work fine. And it might work fine for you. It's still that thing of me not wanting to have software that will update tomorrow or in a month or create a new variable, right? So I think Ventura is probably just Monterey with a bunch of new bug fixes and, you know, things like this. So it's probably just even theoretically even more stable. But it's still, I don't want to have surprises and on a workstation that I rely on day in, day out. Um, Twisted Wave 28, that was the one that the poem was essentially talking about. When yep. Twisted Wave 28 came out, there was an issue with the App Store version. And here's a little thing about App Store versions of apps. It's not saying it's bad across the board. Certain things, it's nice. You get five installs of the app over five different computers. It's a good value. In the case of Twisted Wave, it's not a good value. And here's why. You, once you buy the Twisted Wave license from TwistedWave.com, it lasts forever. I'm it's using eternal. It's eternal. I have a 2007 <laughs> license of Twisted Wave and it still works on every computer. So that's one reason not to. Another reason too is you're taking money out of the pocket of the developer. So, you know, Apple's going to get 30% of anything you buy from the App Store and that doesn't go to the developer. So there's another reason. So three is something called sandboxing. 
Sandboxing is something Apple does to protect you uh, from software becoming rogue or becoming a virus. And yes, there is some truth to that, but it does create new headaches for the developer. And that's what essentially was causing the saving issue um, because Twisted Wave could not access the file system when you went to save that new recording it was stuck in limbo and you couldn't do anything. And it was because of a bug with the app store version only. So there's a reason to probably stick with the regular version. And, it, and even twisted wave isn't impervious to bugs. Don't upgrade it. If it's running perfectly, keep it running on the version you currently have and stay tuned to us. If there's something new, we'll let you know if it's totally worth upgrading to, um, two more quickie things. Twisted wave as well has a beta for windows. And they keep adding features. And now I understand it now can support VST plugins. So the next thing will be, can we make stacks for Windows version of Twisted Wave? That's something I haven't gotten to experiment with, but I will, I'm sure, in the next couple of months. And lastly, just a tool that I've been using more and more often. It's called Remote Mouse and Keyboard. And it's an app I run on my iPad. And the beauty of it is, it's a remote desktop tool for your own computer. So if you want to, for example, control my Mac mini, I touch my Mac mini, it detects it. Now, right now, this screen is acting like a trackpad. That's it. Mm. It's moving the mouse around the screen exactly like a trackpad. If I touch the display button, now it's actually, which I know you can't see on camera, now it's actually a, there. It's a remote yeah. desktop of... There it is. My actual computer. And I can move seamlessly between my two displays. And I can do it on my screen. And I can do it. So it it's an amazing tool. I mean, if you want to go into your booth but not have to have a keyboard monitor mouse in there and all the wiring involved, this app is awesome. It, it, it's been very stable. It seems to work beautifully. And once you get used to the user interface, because basically the screen of your iPad is now a trackpad, right? So... It's a little weird. You're like, you're moving your finger around the screen, but the pointer is somewhere else. You know, here's the pointer over here. Once you get used to it, it works really, really well. So that's, and again, that's called remote mouse and keyboard. Um, and it's a great, it's a great little app. And I found it when I wanted to be able to have my daughter in the booth and, and not have to be in there messing with stuff. I wanted to be able to just remote control what she's doing. And it's, it's working beautifully for that. Outstanding. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I just love my magic mouse. It just makes life super duper easy when you're editing, which is what I want to talk about tonight. But mm -hmm. I also want to remind you that if you've got a question for us about your home voiceover studio, whether it's equipment or a problem or something you've wanted to know, throw it in the chat room right now because Jeff Holman is like chomping at the bit to take down your questions and send them to us and we'll get to those in just a little bit. That's right. Uh, so uh, whether you're on Facebook or whether you're on YouTube, just type, type it in the chat room there and we will get to your question in a little bit. Well, I needed to do a little demonstration because when I'm working with people, a lot of people, they're not familiar with editing. <laughs> and if you can't yeah. edit, voiceover can be kind of tricky. Uh, and there are, there's so many different apps, you know, you, you've, we, you know, we have Twisted Wave, we have Adobe Audition, we, some some use Pro Tools for whatever reason. Uh, and there's there's other programs out there, uh, uh, Reaper and, uh, and Studio One. There's, there's all sorts and, you know, yeah. for all sorts of platforms. When it comes to editing, you have to think like an editor when you're recording. And one of the ways you do that is having yourself a process for when you make a mistake and some people like, well, I just use, uh, you know, um, punch and roll and go back. Punch and roll is okay. If you're, you know, if you're doing audio books and stuff like that, you still got to go back and clean it up. But when you're editing, when you're recording, one of the things you, you should probably not do if you make a mistake is to stop and hit, you know, hit stop and record, and then have to start all over again and recording again. Twisted Wave is great because it allows you to, you, know, you can do all sorts of drop edits and stuff like that. But I wanted to show you something tonight that is something perhaps you didn't even think about. But if you edit properly, you can literally edit in the middle of a word and make it sound like 
you know, there was never an edit there. And that's the real key to great editing is making it totally transparent. George and I talk about this all the time with your processing and all these other things. If they don't know, they don't know. So mm-hmm. I'm going to, I'm going to open up twisted wave here. And there yeah, the it is. edits should disappear to the listener. You should have no clue. No an clue edit occurred. And I'm going to show you how to do that, you know, very precisely. So I'm going to read a little copy here and I'm going to make some mistakes. And then I'm going to show you the real trick to editing this. So it sounds like you know, nothing ever happened. Okay. So all I have to do with this is I have to hit, like hit record, don't I? Okay. I'm going to hit record. And now we're recording in Twisted Wave, and I have some copy here, and it goes, Companies can no longer afford to be reactive. Across all industries, organizations rely on the uptime. And there I go. Or you can use a a clicker, something like that. But I usually go. uh, And then you go back a little bit in the sentence. It goes, um, uh, organizations rely on the uptime of their equipment to be as productive and reliable equipment to be as productive and reliable as possible. Okay. That's a very short demonstration of that, but okay. Back into twisted wave here. Okay. Hit stop. So there's a lot of stuff you can see here, but if you give yourself visual cues to edit, it, you can go back and very quickly realize where you made a mistake. And if there's no mark after it, you realize that, you, that there's no mistake after that until you see the next line, like right here. But you can literally edit between in the middle of a word as long as you edit on a consonant, a T, a P, a K, a B. Reason for that is those consonants start with a very sharp beginning. So as we go back and listen to this, and hopefully you can hear it. Okay, so I made this noise here. Or you can use a, a you clicker, you have something like that. But I usually go, uh, and then you go back a little bit in the sentence. It goes, um, uh, organizations rely on the uptime of, there, there's a T, time of, and we know that I made the mistake back here. Uh, organizations rely on the uptime of, there's the T. And the mistake was made here, I believe. Organizations rely on the uptime of, there's the T right there. So you can literally go back a number of times until you say it right. But in the middle of a word, it now sounds across like across all industries, organizations rely on the uptime of their equipment to be as productive and reliable equipment to be as productive and reliable as possible. And there, there's a P as productive, productive. And we find the P over here. Equipment to be as, there's the P right there. And now the whole sentence is companies can no longer afford to be reactive across all industries. Organizations rely on the uptime of their equipment to be as productive and reliable as possible. And that's, that's the name of that tune. Yeah. It, it, editing is like, it's one of those things where if you do it well, I don't know, there, there's some cases where it's like editing takes more time than voicing it correctly, but there's a certain point where you're doing long, long form stuff and revoicing a whole section just to fix one mistake may not make mistake, make sense. So having good editing chops is going to make you way more efficient. You're going to work much faster. Yeah. And, you know, and having been an editor since the Nixon administration, uh, you know, and we, and I learned how to edit, you know, on reel to reel tape with a razor blade and grease pen and all that kind of stuff. So this is like drawing with crayons because you can literally see where the audio is. And if you edit on a consonant, it, it just makes it totally, totally seamless because everybody's like, I just got to redo the whole sentence. Well, maybe you didn't like the way you did that sentence which is the whole thing, my whole philosophy with editing and why you don't stop. I mean, if you make a mistake, you go back to the the beginning of the the sentence again, but you don't hit the stop button and then try and come back. So Mm -hmm. that's, that's a really important thing. You've got to understand that, uh, editing is it, you've got to be able to repeat 
and understand the natural flow of human speech. There are some people like I, they just sort of butt things together and make sure that, uh, you know, that everything's in there and fits in the time frame. But you've got to have the human pauses in there. And uh, it's really, really important to understand that process. And, uh, of course, I can, you know, in, in any session that I'm teaching on this, I can teach you a little bit more about some of these things. But that's one of my favorites is always edit on a hard consonant. Uh, and try not to begin every sentence talking a little bit louder. <laughs> you want, yeah, I'm, you know the the William Shatner effect. <laughs> uh, I, I find people tend to do that an awful lot. They get in front of a microphone. It's like, oh, I'm beginning a sentence. Okay, I am beginning a sentence, and they just yeah. just trails off. So yeah, uh, so that's my editing tip for now. And uh, and now we're going to go to your questions in just a little bit here. And if you have those questions, put them in the chat room right now because we want to answer your questions on home voiceover studios, whether it's about equipment, whether it's about technique, whether it's about processing, whether it's about whether to process or not, any question you have, please throw it in the chat room right now, and we will get to it in just a little bit. So anyway, we're going to take a break and we'll be right back here on voiceover body shop tech talk right after these messages. This is Ariana Ratner, and you're enjoying Voice Over Body Shop with Dan Leonard and George Whittem, VOBS.TV. It's the holiday season, and if you're a voice talent, not everyone in your family or close friends really understands what you want for your home voiceover studio. You want a what? Well, VoiceOverEssentials.com has the perfect solution, the Voice Over Essentials gift card. It's the perfect answer when you get that you want a what question? You pick the amount you want to give, and they take care of the rest. The recipient will receive their digital gift card and a gift code to use for anything they offer at voiceoveressentials.com. Like the Harlan Hogan VO1A microphone, the Portabooth Pro or Plus, Harlan Hogan Signature Series voiceover optimized headphones. You want a what? Go to voiceoveressentials.com and click on Shop and Gift Cards and choose the amount. Give them or give yourself the gift of getting exactly what you want. Gift cards now at voiceoveressentials.com. Thanks, Harlan. There are two things that I love about teaching voice talent to add audiobook narration to their tool belt via a course that I teach with Dan O'Day called the ACX Masterclass. The first one is the success that our students have over 5,000 books available for sale right now on Audible from our students alone. That's the first thing that I love. The second thing that I love is saving people money. And during this week only, we're offering a three payment plan, no interest, no fees, the lowest price anybody will pay for the course. We'll do the course right after the first of the year. But if you start this week, you can make three quick payments, easy on your pocketbook, and off to the races we go. If you want details, go to acxmasterclass.com. That's acxmasterclass.com. Hi, this is Bill Farmer, and you are watching Voice Over Body Shop. It's great. I could have swore there's supposed to be a source element spot in there somewhere. <laughs> take it away tell us about source elements and source connect. i will i will i will um so source elements you know you've heard me talk about them ad nauseum on the show they're a great sponsor long time sponsor i bet you didn't know that they have an academy you didn't know that probably um but they do and they do they're doing a lot more training now in-house than they used to um and you can really learn a lot now most of what they're teaching obviously is directly related to their you know the services and softwares that they sell um but for example there's a four lesson class called advanced remote recording um so if you find yourself in a role where you're going to be recording somebody else do the voice acting a tool a, a course like that could be extremely useful you'll feel way more understanding of the ins and outs of making that work or maybe you just want to be way more comfortable with Source Connect, the software, the one that most voice actors are probably going to have in their studio to connect to other studios. 
Well, you can get up to speed with a five lesson course on Source Connect 3.9. Um, 75 bucks for a five lesson course is pretty cool. There's 21 quizzes. You get a course certificate, which obviously you could share on your website. And um, it's a great it's a great way to just become way more comfortable with the tools that you use. Not just somebody who knows what it is and knows if you click here, something happens. Feel like you're a little bit more empowered to understand the tools that you use. So thanks so much, Source Elements. Thanks for supporting us. And thanks now for supplying the tools and the training people really need to get better at this stuff. We'll be right back. And here we are. We can go right back into the show yeah, because we already, we're we already, already did here. that. Yeah. I'm, I'm like a programmed robot sometimes. I just go into old habits. <laughs> so we're in the question zone. What do we have coming in for questions? We got a couple of questions here. Um, Grace Newton starts off with, I've been avoiding updating my MacBook Air M1. What should I be prepared for when I do? Well, because uh, I just I, did it myself. Uh, yeah, I kind of just talked about it, but. I mean, yeah. what did you do to prepare? Anything special or just time machine back? Uh, I don't do any of that stuff. I trust Max. They never, never screw up on me, except for the one time when I was trying to erase a hard drive when I wanted to sell the, uh, the old, uh, the old MacBook we had mm -hmm. and, um, <laughs> and it blew out one of the, something and then it cost a lot to fix it, which <laughs> oh, is no. the first time I've ever had that problem with the Mac, but, uh, you know, things happen. I'd say if you're going to upgrade to uh, to the new one, which is uh, Ventura, mm -hmm. uh, be prepared for it. Like I said, for a couple of delays, maybe with some programs. You know, the thing with Twisted Wave over the weekend. Of course, I was like, "What? There's a problem with Twisted Wave?" And it turns out, well, it was just like you said. It was because of the uh, the App Store version of that. Uh, you know, I I you know, I upgraded to Ventura, tried everything. And it always works. You know, I've never really had a problem. I think I probably had more problems when I'm upgrading uh, the OS on my phone more than anything else. Mm -hmm. uh, the things yeah. stop working. Uh, the developers are like, what? They changed the OS on the phone and it doesn't work. And you'll try and tap it and it goes, ah, and then it just stops. Yeah, yeah. Something yeah. along those lines. But, you know, for the most part, the... Uh, you know, I, I find that you, you shouldn't have to worry about too many things. You know, be patient. Uh, eventually, the, the apps that you're going to have, you know, that work on a Mac are going to adapt and they will they will work. But this program that we keep talking about, Rosetta, that allows, you know, the computer to interpret old, old uh, programs to run on a new system, uh, it works pretty well. But sometimes it takes just a second or two for it to, to kick in. But I think that's what's probably going on. I mean, if you're already on an M1 machine, upgrading to a new OS should be a pretty much problem-free, like it should be. Um, if you're upgrading from older OSs, jumping forward to two generations or three or four, that I probably wouldn't recommend. I, I don't think I would be going to the newest things on an older machine, but because these new OSs were written natively to run on these newer computers like the M1 Mac, you should have a lot fewer issues. So um, just be backed up, you know, like we all just said and said again, um, have backup, uh, make sure you're backed up, make sure you know that everything you're running is gonna run on that new system. If you're really geeky, you can make an image or whatever we call it of a drive and have a second copy of your whole system. I've known people that go to great lengths to do things like this. I used to, I don't anymore. Um, there's so few things that go wrong. Um, once you're within a certain generation of OS. So yeah, if you're really worried, book a session with Dan or I, we'll, we'll hold your hand and we'll make sure you don't make big gross mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really? Uh, yeah. I, I, you know, I back up everything data wise. I mean, you know, I've got a, a five terabyte drive here and mm -hmm. I've loaded everything that's been on every computer I've had since like 1997 on there and it's not only like you know it's hardly it's hardly breaking a sweat i mean it just has lots of room so it's much easier to just take everything dump it onto a solid state drive or or you know a uh, a large you know an eight terabyte drive or a five or something like that mm -hmm. and everything is there just keep things organized 
and know where certain things are. Okay, here's all my sound files from here, and here's all my, my video files, and here's all my documents, and here's all... And you, and you keep putting it in your hard drive. You know, there's, there's Time Machine, which is also very useful. Uh, but I find just saving the data of, of old productions and stuff like that is really all you need. I mean, if something comes up and you have a client that's like, remember that spot you ran last year? Can, we need to update it, but just with a tag or something. Do you have the old spot? And like, there it is. And, uh, and that makes it's it nice easier. to be able to say yes. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> what I really like though, is when a client emails me and said, we're renewing that spot for another in Norway for another year. You know, can we do that for another year? And you know, and here's how much it, I'm like, yeah, here, fine. No problem. <laughs> I'll be happy to do that and, and send you an invoice, but I don't have to revoice it at all. And that was a strange spot for a Norwegian company, but work is work. <laughs> anyway, a uh, question for you from AP White Watts. Okay. Hi, AP. Um, asking, how am I enjoying the Studio Bricks booth and is it fairly soundproof? Fairly soundproof? <laughs> it's fairly soundproof, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean... It's, it's much, much better than my office uh, with airplanes. Like if, if I had something mission critical to record, um, I would be in there in a heartbeat. Um, I, I've actually, I was recently interviewed and is now released on JMC, J. Michael Collins's podcast. I was interviewed on J. Michael Collins podcast and I recorded in the studio bricks booth. Um, I know it sounds ridiculous that I don't record in there often. Folks, I don't record much. I'm, I'm a, I'm a coach, You're not a voice trainer, actor for crying support. out loud. I'm not a voice actor. But I decided I'll record um, on the interview in there. And I, I had no, zero interruptions throughout that hour, well, 40 minute long thing. Like we have constant aircraft here, vehicles passing by, gardeners. I had absolutely no cause or to think to pause or stop talking ever. Never had an interruption. So yes, it has, uh, worked out very nicely. It is pretty soundproof. I would say it's better than the average. It's certainly better than any double. I'm sorry. It's better than any single wall constructed booth, like a standard whisper room. Um, it is better than most other booths I've ever heard. And I'm very blessed to have it. And my daughter is the one who's really going to be doing the most recording in there. Once we start auditioning. She's coaching right now with our dear friend, Martha Khan, who is an excellent, excellent children's voiceover coach. She highly, highly. Kids. Yeah. She's so great. And, um, my daughter is the one who's really going to be doing the, the lion's share of recording in there. Although <laughs> my fr our friend, Eddie, Eddie, he, whenever we do a workout together with my daughter and his kids, he's like, George, now why don't you read on something, man? He's like, man, you need to be doing this. And I'm just like, all right, I'm, I'm, I'm biding my time. I'm not ready. I am not ready to distract from everything else going on in my, in my life. I'm not ready to dabble in voiceover, but, um, yeah, the booth is mostly going to be used by, uh, my daughter when we really start getting serious about auditioning. Yeah. That's great to hear. Uh, somebody was asking about where do you get a clicker? Yeah, you, you can get them. At, I mean, you can probably get them at a pet store. Of course, we this this one was this was the old voiceover bot. No, this was an East West Audio Body Shop clicker. Oh that wow, we, that we had. I'd, so I've worn it out because I've I've used it so much on you know long presentations that are, you break them up into slides and stuff. That's another thing I could show you is how to break up things into slides on uh, on Twisted Wave or in Adobe Audition. But these Keep are great. Keep one more, Dan. Keep one more. Next time. Next time. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Uh, you know, it's great because it gives you a great audio, physical audio cue that you a can marker. see. Right. Um, you know, we had these and we, we, we gave them away, or I think we sold them for like 75 cents or something. I can't remember what we sold them for, but every time somebody from Canada wanted one, I had to fill out an import form to mail, so, to to mail, mail this thing, because these are clearly a threat to Canadian national security. Uh, or their GNP or something. Or, or something like that. What's coming from America? Canadians should be making these things. More Canadian content. CanCon, as they call it. Uh, <laughs> guys up in Toronto are going, what? Anyway, <laughs> these are really nice to have. But 
you don't have to use a clicker. Like I said, you can always go or beep or something along those lines. That's going to give you the visual cue you need to edit with properly. So mm -hmm. we'll go with that. So that you get these anywhere. Yeah, I mean, I know there's marker. You can make M be the marker button and make a marker in the file. But I don't know. If you don't want to have a keyboard in your booth, and you want to just be at the mic, not having any extra gadgets and just this is so easy to have. Yeah. It, it's very, very practical. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Jeff asks last week, if you were here last week, uh, Johnny Heller said a two to one ratio of booth work to finished hour is standard. Dan, that would be me. Are you at that level? And how much extra time do you put in for book prep? Well, mm. I haven't done any audiobooks in about 10 years. Uh, <laughs> to me, it was high effort, low reward. And the reward was getting lower and lower and lower. And, you know, and I, and I did stuff for some, some big publishers and I must say, and I always like to say that ACX buys me lunch every month, <laughs> you know, but <laughs> just for me, you know, it's, oh, I can go to Wendy's now and, you know, and, and you know, that sort of thing. I, I did like 40 titles and, uh, you know, a lot of it was for, uh, you know, just, you know, an upfront payment and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But the stuff that I had on royalty. Uh, still is, and there were a couple of very good books, one by Eric Foner, who's a well-known, uh, historical, uh, novelist. Actually, he's, he's a historian and it's actually mm -hmm. a true historical narrative. And I, and I did that. That's still, that's still selling well. There's also uh, one I did on philosophy, which I did not understand one bit. Uh, but apparently I must've read it right because that one keeps selling. That was a very popular book and. Uh, so, you know, that probably sells 10, 15 copies a month, which is fine and dandy. Uh, but of course, if you have a lot of those in royalty, they are, they're going to, you know, it's like an annuity as we, used to, as we used to say in the insurance business. Yeah, it will, it will continue to accumulate as long as people are buying that book. But as far as a two to one ratio, you know, I got it down to where I was much faster than that. I mean, you know, I, maybe when I started, it might've been three to one, but I'm, you know, I'm an editor by, you know, by trade. And that's something I just do incredibly fast because of the techniques that I use and things like that. And the codes that I use, okay, if I go, beep, that means go back to the beginning of a paragraph. If I go, okay, she's made a mistake in this word, go back and just fix that word. You know, read the beginning of the phrase of that sentence again. Cause I don't want to spend a lot of time going back and, and, and redoing an entire sentence. Uh, and I find that, you know, because of those, those tricks that I use, I can go through it very, very quickly. Uh, twisted wave is great for, for long frame format narration, real easy to do drop in edits. Uh, you know, if you have corrections or something along those lines and the, um, the producer says, well, you made a mistake here, or this needs to be changed or something along those lines. I can just re-record it and just dump it in there and no one will ever know. As long as you're using the same microphone and, you know, listening to what was, what was my voice sounding like at that particular time of the day? Yeah. So, uh, I, two to one. Yeah. I'd, two to one is if you're really good at it. Three, I prepare to be three to one. If you're just starting out, maybe even four to one, because you have to learn how to edit, but that's why we're here. We're teaching you these tricks that allow you to learn these things and get it done. Right. I think another important distinction was. He doesn't do ACX books, folks. <laughs> yeah. So those, those time ratios he's talking about are just to be the actor. Right. Um, the folks that are doing ACX books and painfully producing them 100% themselves are spending way more than two to one. They're spending five, seven, eight hours per finished hour. I yeah. hear this often. People tell me this all the time. And that ain't no way to make a living, folks. Yeah, that, that's really just, it. it's, it's brutal. Um, the mastering, because Johnny was never taught how to do it quickly and easily to him is an absolute mystery to me. It's absolutely, uh, elementary idea because <laughs> I've taught how to do it on so many platforms. There's tools that automate it almost completely. It is not nearly as hard as it sounds anymore with the right setup and the training. So, um, but yeah, it, proofing, there's no way to shortcut that. It takes a while to proof an audiobook. Now you might be able to proof it a little faster than real time. I've heard of people listening 
one and a half to one, even possibly two to one um, real time. So they're listening at double speed. But yeah, it's it's hard. To, there's not a lot of shortcuts there. You really have to listen to it to catch those um, mistakes, you know. So and and the better the narrator you are, the better you are at cold reading, or reading it for the second time if you pre read the book, or, or a third, depending on how how really uh, yeah. how much research you do. Exactly. Then you you might be able to move faster. So it all comes down to experience. Yeah, and 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 of course, when it comes to to editing, I mean, if you're editing your own stuff, it doesn't make economic sense especially if you're doing stuff on acx to do it yourself uh or, or, or i mean you have to do it yourself if you have somebody else do it it's cutting into your profit which is like you know pretty thin margin uh so it's good to get good at it and then if you get really good at it then you can start editing for other people and make up for the time the money you're not making from not doing enough audiobook work uh but there's always a need for editors out there but the top people don't do their own their own editing they they send it off to somebody else. That's there's right. programs that will do proofing. There, are, there's all sorts of stuff that goes with audiobooks, and uh, it's its own industry, folks. That's it, why it, it has is. its own conferences, its own Facebook groups, its own everything. And you know, when I came into this business from the voiceover end of things, and audiobook people because of ACX were starting to appear uh, in my inbox, I had to start really looking into it. What is this process? What? Oh my gosh, you have to do all this? Oh man, this is time consuming. Um, and finding ways to shortcut and and really make the process more efficient for the narr- for the narrator was was the name of the game. All righty, uh, one more question here from Grace Newton. What's the best way to clean a laptop screen? No, that's not it. <laughs> yeah, I I use Purell. <laughs> what do you I, I have this stuff uh, that I've just had on my in my drawer for years. It's called iClear Apple Polish. <laughs> oh, this is specifically for apples? Okay. Um, it says, works on MacBooks. That's such a, what a marketing play. Uh, MacBook Pros. Oh, it works on MacBooks and MacBook and Pros. MacBook, even though it's the same screen. <laughs> cinema, this is how old this is. Studio and cinema displays. This, is, this, is, this has been around for a while. Um, yeah, something like this. And then spray it onto a, a a glass a Glens cleaning cloth. This one's pretty dirty. Um, and then that's and that's what I that's what I use. For I actually have another cleaning tool. Um, let's see. Do you have that like that brush with the yeah, s- where the squeegee that? brush? Where is that? Come on, you oh, gotta keep this is. stuff handy. Yeah. Uh, here it is. So I used to just carry around. I still carry around this brush. I don't even know what this is for. Maybe it's a dusting brush, or maybe it's like a just sort of a chunky kid's paintbrush. I don't know. This is great for cleaning the nooks and crannies in the keyboard. But then I found these things, and maybe I need to get some more for holiday gifts this year. It's 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 a it's a screen wipe, just wiping off smudges. It's a dusting brush for cleaning out little dusty things, and it's a little rubber silicone spudgery thing for cleaning out in t- in little cracks and seams and crevices in your keyboard and stuff. This thing's kind of cool. Of course, I don't know what it's called or who made it because, oh, here we go. It's it's made by Full Circle. Full Circle. Not the partial circle, the full circle. Right. There you go. <laughs> There's a tool you can use to, uh, to clean out the nooks and crannies. Yeah. All right. We've got one more question here from AP White Watts. He says, are, are you able to use the speech recognition feature on Twisted Wave similar to Positron? Yeah, I haven't spent much time in Positron. Um, so I know what it's, I know what it's conceptually for. I know it's for helping automate proofing and find, you know, let you know that you misspoke a word. Um, yeah, it, the Twisted Wave speech recognition is a similar idea. So when you, when you're working on a project, you load your script into Twisted Waves script importing tool. And now while you're recording, it's recognizing each word that you speak, highlighting it. And if you miss a word, miss, miss the word completely or say the wrong word, it will highlight it in yellow in your script, letting you know where you made a flub. So you can go much more easily back and navigate. And it follows where you, wherever you are in the waveform. So if you, if you highlight a word in the script, it goes right to that word in the waveform and vice versa. So the script and the waveform are always attached to each other in time. 
it definitely dan if that was around when you were doing this full time i'm sure you would have used it like it probably would have saved you a lot of time it, it it may have but then again i just i didn't like doing audio books yeah so. that's the bottom line <laughs> it's i mean just it, a lot of time i mean heck and i did the entire bible so uh <laughs> yeah yeah Jeez. absolutely yeah no it, it, you can you can download the demo for for 30 days for free um and play around with it and if you find it, you like it it's only 50 bucks and just like everything twisted wave it's a one-time buy so Super it's duper. a pretty good value yeah all right some very practical stuff there that you might not normally hear but you only get it here on voiceover body shop tech talk the condensed version yeah anyway all right we'll be right back after these messages and wrap things up so don't go away Hi, this is Bill Farmer, and you are watching Voice Over Body Shop. It's great. In these modern times, every business needs a website. When you need a website for your voice acting business, there's only one place to go. Like the name says, voiceactorwebsites.com. Their experience in this niche webmaster market gives them the ability to quickly and easily get you from concept to live online in a much shorter time. When you contact voiceactorwebsites.com, their team of experts and designers really get to know you and what your needs are. They work with you to highlight what you do. Then they create an easily navigable website for your potential clients to get the big picture of who you are and how your voice is the one for them. Plus, voiceactorwebsites.com has other great resources like their practice script library and other resources to help your voiceover career flourish. Don't try it yourself. Go with the pros. Voiceactorwebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. Your dynamic voiceover career requires extra resources to keep moving ahead. There's one place where you can explore everything the voiceover industry has to offer. That place is voiceoverextra.com. Whether you're just exploring a voiceover career or a seasoned veteran ready to reach that next professional level, stay in touch with market trends, coaching, products, and services while avoiding scams and other pitfalls. VoiceOver Extra has hundreds of articles, free resources, and training that will save you time and help you succeed. Learn from the most respected talents, coaches, and industry insiders when you join the online sessions bringing you the most current information on topics like audiobooks, auditioning, home studio setup, and equipment, marketing, performance techniques, and much more. It's time to hit your one-stop daily resource for voiceover success. Sign up for a free subscription to newsletters and reports. It's all here at voiceoverextra.com. That's voiceoverxtra.com. This is the Latin lover narrator from Jane the Virgin, Anthony Mendez, and you're enjoying Dan and George on The Voiceover Body Shop. Hey there. Well, let's see. Next week is what's next week going to be? Next week is like the last week before Christmas. I don't know if we'll see you all before Christmas, but happy Hanukkah to everybody and Merry Christmas. And we're still deciding whether we want to do a show the day after Christmas mm. because Christmas when, is on a Sunday. When is uh, Hanukkah this year? It starts next week sometime. Oh, okay. Not next week. It starts. It starts the 19th, Monday the 19th. Oh, it's a lot close. It actually overlaps Christmas. Yes. You know, everybody says, oh, it's late this year. And then if you know the Jewish calendar, it's like, no, it's when it's always is. That's it's a 20, never late. It's, it's a 25th it of Kislev. That's when it always is. <laughs> anyway, uh, next week on the show, who knows who we're going to have, but somebody will be there. Although I did run into Maurice LaMarche at the vet the other day, and he said he wanted to be on the show. Again, <laughs> that would be so. fun. Oh, my God. He has a very large dog. <laughs> anyway, uh, who are our donors of the week? We have Robert Leadham, Stephen Chandler, Casey Clack, Jonathan Grant, Tom Pinto, Shelly Avellino, Greg Thomas, a Dr. Voice, Antland Productions, Martha Khan, 949 Designs, and Christopher Epperson, Sarah Borges, Philip Sapir, Brian Page, Patty Gibbons, Rob Ryder, Shauna Pennington Baird, Don Griffith, Trey Mosley, Trey been with us for years. Diana Birdsall. And Sandra, Sandra Manwiller. Manwiller. 
Yeah. Well, I have to get ready for my shift at uh, Trader Joe's, so uh, we're going to get out of here. <laughs> that is the quintessential Trader Joe's shirt. It's, it's, an old, it's an old joke, <laughs> but it's also an old shirt. So, uh, okay. <laughs> Remember, if you need help with your home voiceover studio, you can go over to homevoiceoverstudio.com, and I can help you out, and we'll talk about the voiceover business and how to make sure your audio is sounding right. Or you can talk to Mr. Tech, George the Tech, at George the dot tech, right? That's right. That's right. And then, uh, there's a webinar that you have missed by now, but it don't worry because every webinar that we do on, uh, live, live or dead, <laughs> every single one of them is archived in our, on our, in our online store on Vimeo that you can rent and watch for a year. So don't worry if you've missed it. We just, uh, we just did one on Adobe audition. Um, cool. actually yeah, that's right. It was on Adobe Audition. Yeah, um, gift ideas, uh, by the way, um, because it's still the holidays. My dear dad, he <laughs> loves making stuff. And let me show you a couple of kinds of things that my dad makes. Now, this this one is not... Okay. This one, unfortunately, the, the wiring... No, that's not the right one either. <laughs> <laughs> I've got all these things. They're dioramas. My dad makes dioramas. And he makes them for whatever you can think of. This is a diorama of me at the bicycle shop where I volunteer every That's Wednesday exactly night. Exactly what it looks like. At the microwave. Mm -hmm. There you go. Isn't that cute? Yeah. So that's the kind of thing my dad. So he makes dioramas, but he also makes whirly gigs. <laughs> and here's one right here. This one's got some extra wiring and stuff because we're trying to make it electrified. So because I don't have wind. <laughs> in my apartment um but anyway this is a whirly gig you spin the propeller and the thing moves around this is probably one of the least interesting ones because it's just based on my old recording studio that was based in an rv that looks exactly like this down to the audio snake in the back right wow. there there's the snake with, with the big cable it's amazing that's anyway very very personal and customized <laughs> i mean that's what i mean he makes bespoke uh you know uh designs if needed or you can check him out just email him my dad's not on etsy okay he's too busy for that he's fair weather just email whirly gigs fair weather whirly gigs at comcast.net and you can send my dad an email he can either make you something custom or show you send pictures of uh some of his inventory because he's got quite a few all righty. All right. We need to thank our sponsors like Harlan Hogan's voiceover essentials. Yeah. Voiceover extra. <laughs> Source elements. Source elements. Yeah. You said that one. Voheroes.com. Voiceactorwebsites.com. And worldvoices.org. World the org. Industry Association of Freelance Voice Talent. Uh, thanks to Jeff Holman uh, for getting the questions in from the chat room. Sumerlino for... Just amazing direction tonight. And Lee Penny, just for being Lee Penny. Hey, Merry Christmas. Happy Hanukkah. Hey, we'll see you all very shortly. Uh, enjoy this show. And you can watch any show because they're all on YouTube and they're all on Facebook. And you can go back and start from the beginning. And in 11 years, you will catch up. That's right. <laughs> I'll watch one episode every day. It'll, it'll take you like a half a year. No, exactly. it'll take you a year. Yeah, no, it'll yeah. take you more than a year. We'll get to work. Yeah, start now. <laughs> Done by 2024. <laughs> anyway, that's going to do it for us tonight. You know, this is not an easy business voiceover, but if your sound is is got to be there. But we, as we always say, if it sounds good, it is good. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or VO. B S. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Have a great holiday season, everybody. Thank you.